Okay, January 2025. Happy New Year, everybody. Featured highlights. This new video series is going to be replacing the monthly quiz found on anythinglaris.com. The idea is to take concepts and snippets from the Gull Guide North America and to expand and provide more detail on some of the ideas and information found in the Gull Guide. And so I plan for these videos to be anywhere from three to five minutes. They might be a little bit longer, a little bit shorter at times, but this should be a monthly video that comes out um, and published on anything Laris. Now, if you'd like to make some requests or suggestions, feel free to send those to thegullguide at gmail.com. That's all one word, thegullguide at gmail.com. And again, the idea is to just expand on and, and provide some analysis of some of the things that we are reading in the book. And so we'll begin with um, the idea of juvenile plumage. Seems like a simple term, and it really is if we understand it at root. Um, when a bird fledges, when it leaves the nest with its first set of true feathers, it's in its juvenile plumage. Um, but it's not long before many of our gulls start to molt out of juvenile plumage. And so there is a point in which we stop referring to them as juveniles. Uh, and I'm noticing more and more people in the last couple months um, using things like first cycle, first basic, first alternate. And that's amazing uh, to see that progress in just a couple months. And it's deeply and greatly appreciated. Um, so we don't want to at some point keep calling these things juveniles. And, you know, birding has reached a level of sophistication where with a simple pair of optics, I think you can make out a lot of these things if, if you have the interest in truly understanding what it is you're looking at. And so um, this modified Humphrey Parks system that I talk about in the book, the preferred system for molts and plumages, um, it synonymizes juvenile plumage with first basic plumage. And so it is perfectly fine to call this lesser blackback gull from page 10 a first basic or juvenile lesser blackback gull. Now, some weeks later, um, these lesser blackbacks and a number of other species start to molt, primarily their upper scapulars. Uh, this one here we can see has also molted some inner greater coverts. Uh, these are the inner greater coverts here. And... Um, you know, just for comparison, these are the mid greater coverts, and there's some more greater coverts here that are tucked underneath these flanks. Um, the, so this lesser blackback all anyway has has replaced a number of its scapulars and inner greater coverts. And if you're into this sort of thing, it's actually dropped um, some upper tertials here, maybe even a mid tertial. So these are molt gaps. And if we look even closer, uh, this, 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 and this here, these feathers also appear to be first alternate. At any rate, both of these birds are still considered first cycle gulls. They have not undergone this extensive complete molt. The one on the bottom should now simply be referred to as first alternate instead of juvenile. It's that simple. Okay, there's a good number of upper parts that have been replaced here. And the molt that has replaced these feathers is known as the first pre-alternate molt. And it's called pre-alternate because it is leading to a plumage. It is leading to a and producing a alternate plumage, the first alternate plumage. Hermann's gall is another one of these things that has very solid dark brown upper parts as a juvenile, extensive pale edging. In fact, this Hermann's has short wing projection, um, petite bill, and these things can continue to grow for a number of weeks and months after leaving the nest. In fact, this is very early. This is April, California. Um, and these Hermann's galls don't keep that juvenile plumage too long. Um, it could be just a few weeks later before you start seeing some molt in the scapulars. Uh, in fact, the farther south you go with Hermann's gulls, it seems the more extensive their first pre-alternate molts. But there's no mistake here that this bird is no longer a juvenile Hermann's. 
with all of these replaced scapulars and all these dark head feathers and breasts and body feathers, um, it is more fitting to call it a first alternate, a first alternate Hearman skull. Um, if you look at the next plate over, plate 13.5 on page 146, that bird is a bird that lingered in Virginia for, I want to say, several months. And in the captions there, you see how I clarify it's not a second cycle, despite all of these wing coverts being replaced, all of the tertials being replaced. It's solid dark brown, and it looks so much like a second cycle. But the reason why it's not a second cycle is because that bird has only replaced upper parts. It's not been a full year where it's replaced all of these flight feathers. So the flight feathers are still juvenile or um, first basic. Finally, um, to just talk about things that mid-latitude versus high-latitude, um, in this plate here, plate 41 on page 24, I point out these three what look like Great Lakes American herring gulls with a first cycle Thayer's gull. These lower latitude, mid-latitude birds like California gulls in the Great Basin and ring-billed gulls all across the U.S. and Canada, many of them will replace most of these scapulars uh, fairly early on in their first cycle. And so the herring gulls here, we may be um, more correct in saying these are first alternate herring gulls. Whereas the Thayer's, by and large, still appears to be juvenile. Okay, it's just one little detail to kind of enrich the the observations that you're making with these gulls. Now, for a long time, it was thought that these Thayer's gulls and Glaucus gulls that come down from the north don't replace any juvenile feathers, and that's just not true. Um, they often do, and even in November here, we can see a few of these mantle and uppermost scapular feathers have been re replaced. It's just that. The contrast is so low, unless you're really looking at these things, you're oftentimes not going to notice this. Um, but it is quite noticeable, and it's being documented more and more frequently now, especially uh, uh, at coastal sites and the farther south you go, like Oregon and California. Um, and later in the season, it's not unusual to have a good number of these scapulars replaced, even on Iceland gulls. All right, so that is that. Again, uh, when this bird leaves the nest, it's a juvenile or first basic plumage. Uh, it starts to undergo this partial molt known as the first pre-alternate molt and starts to replace a number of these upper parts. Um, next time, we'll look at more extensive first pre-alternate molts in things like uh, yellow-footed gull, uh, in things like kelp gull. In fact, that kelp gull that's being seen in south coastal Texas right now, that bird has a pretty neat first pre-alternate molt where it's replaced most of its tail feathers. It's holding on to a couple of juvenile tail feathers as well as some um, um, first alternate tail feathers. It's replaced its tertial. So a really neat case to look at and, and read up on if you're interested in uh, interesting first pre-alternate molts. Um, check out that kelp gall being seen in coastal Texas and also look at the kelp gall uh, plates in the gull guide. Okay, uh, again, if you want to make some requests for future videos and future ideas, just send them to thegullguide at gmail.com. Thank you, guys.